When the Great Depression brought hard times to America, families filled movie theaters to take in short reel comedies and their minds off their troubles. With his chubby cheeks, dimples, and irresistible smile, perhaps the most endearing of the child actors in the Our Gang series was Robert Bobby Hutchins. Nicknamed Weezer, the Tacoma, Washington native appeared in 58 Our Gang films between 1927 and 1933. Typically clad in a beanie and corduroy vest, Hutchins appeared as the tag-along little brother, always eager to be part of the action. After Hutchins was cut from the series in 1933, the young actor faded into obscurity. With World War II raging as he graduated from high school in 1943, Bobby trained in California to become a military pilot. However, tragic miscalculations on a May 17, 1945 training run caused the 20-year-old to die in a fiery crash in a California field. Join Jeff on this episode of History Hunters as he revisits the life of Bobby Hutchins and reveals, for the first time, the site of the deadly crash of 75 years ago. Jeff will use the official accident report to detail the last moments of the former child star. Bobby Hutchins took flight for the last time. In about 20 minutes, the former child star would be dead. Fourteen years earlier. You don't want that ham, give it to us. Nothing to do with it. like it. Don't you near it. Bobby Hutchins' first film in Our Gang was the 1927 short Baby Brother. Hutchins' tenure in Our Gang took him through both the silent and early sound periods of the series. He appeared as the main character in several of the films, including Bouncing Babies, Pups is Pups, Big Ears, and Dogs is Dogs. The reason for Weezer's departure from the series in 1933 remains a mystery today. His only film work outside of Arging included a handful of appearances and three features in 1932 and 1933. With the boys' career over, James and Olga Hutchins went their separate ways and Bobby moved back to Parkland where he attended Parkland grade school. He graduated from Lincoln High School in 1943 and joined the U.S. Army Air Forces, enrolling in the aviation cadet program with the goal of becoming a pilot. During the first three months of 1945, Hutchins trained in Lancaster, California. He later was transferred to train at the Merced Army Airfield. As he neared the completion of his flight school training, Mother Olga was preparing to journey from Washington to Merced for graduation ceremonies a week later. Right now, I'm driving out to the Balico Airfield, where Bobby Hutchins was killed on May 17, 1945, towards the end of World War II. It was basically established outside of a pasture, where a farmer gave up some of his land out there, and they built some airstrips during World War II. At the time World War II broke out, we didn't have an Air Force. We basically had an Air Force division of the Army. I would imagine that they built this out here because it's not very populated. There's a lot of pasture land so that if there was a crash, it wouldn't affect any of the people on the ground. He died in a grassy field. really a peaceful countryside out here. 
I'm about a half mile from the southern end of the airport where the crash took place 75 years ago. Ugh. Oh, look. I stumbled upon this skull. Don't know what it is. It could be a coyote or a dog or something, but I don't see the skeleton anywhere. There are airplanes out here doing some practice takeoffs and landings. There's a Cessna type plane right there coming in for landing. Apparently this airfield gets more traffic than I thought it did. So I'm pretty jazzed that I was able to find this. I always heard about Bobby Hutchins being killed. I didn't know exactly where. However, until I got the official Air Force report, I didn't know exactly where it was. This is where it was. I'm going to get closer to that fence, but that's the boundaries of the Baleco Airport, or Turlock Airport. I'm not going to break the law by going inside of it. And I can't fly a drone here either. But the crash site was about 500 feet beyond that fence. So it looks like I came as far as I can. Here's a sign that indicates that I can't go any farther, otherwise I'll be trespassing. If you had been here around 8.30 p.m. on May 17th, 1945, you would have seen a huge orange fireball erupting from the ground back that direction. It snuffed out the life of Bobby Hutchins. When Robert Hutchins passed away, the local newspaper here in town didn't really give it much attention. In fact, it was on the inside page about two inches of space, mentioned his name, but made no indication that he was the famous child actor, Bobby Weezer Hutchins. The crash would have been off in that direction, about 500 feet. The report indicates that he fell short about a thousand feet shy of the runway when he was struck by a plane that was flying right over him. I have a page from the report right here and I want to read it to you. This is a description of the accident that Hutchins was in an AT-6D, took off from Castle Air Force Base, or what would be Castle Air Force Base, at approximately 8 p.m. for this field right behind me. He uh, set his base leg too far from the landing mat, so in other words, he was landing too far away from the runway, so they told him to pick up his throttle. And what happened was another plane was coming in right to the, uh, off to the side, and just above him, Hutchins pulled up, hit the bottom of the aircraft. I am not sure from reading the accident report if Hutchins cockpit or his head was hit the bottom of the plane but we know from pictures that the prop actually cut through the bottom of the other man's plane I believe his name was Edward Hamill Hamill was able to land his plane with no problems whatsoever after the two had an impact Hutchins plane went at a 60 degree angle right towards the ground and exploded into a fireball there was no indication that he tried to pull up which may be an indication that he was debilitated and possibly dead. Hopefully he was dead, because we'd hate to think that he died in a fire crash. Using Google Earth's measuring tool, I determined that Hutchins' plane came down approximately in this location. John Horak stated that Hutchins tried to gain altitude after coming in short and didn't see the plane coming in above him. Second Lieutenant Joseph Lucas stated that the air was crowded with planes, the pilots confused, and not giving themselves enough space. No trespassing. We're not going to trespass today. There's really nothing left. I'm sure if you went out there with a metal detector, you could probably find that spot. I'm sure there's pieces of the plane that are buried. I was fascinated to watch one YouTube channel in which some metal detectors went out and found pieces of Leonard Skinner's plane after these many years after it crashed in the 70s. So it wouldn't surprise me if there's pieces of his plane out there here east of Turlock, California. I'm going to come down here and show you what I think is debris from the airfield from back in the 40s. This airfield was decommissioned in 1946 and handed over to the city of Turlock in 1947. Looks like that concrete there is left over from the days of World War II. I'm not sure what this is, but it obviously goes back to some kind of structure that was here. It could have been a tower, it could have been the legs of the tower. So we have the coastal winds that come in from this direction, then from the northwest. So the planes are always landing and taking off in this direction. I'm assuming that this is where the aircraft tower was at that time. Remnants of World War II here. From Google Earth, I could see that there was a dilapidated building that was removed. 
I love to haul the wood out here. There it is. Some kind of structure dating back to the airfield a long time ago. So yeah, that's that's what's left of some of the buildings that are out here. Decommissioned in 1946, including Castle Air Force Base, which also has been decommissioned. Check it out. Looks like uh, some kind of satellite dish. Somebody's toilet right here as well. And ironically today, you can see Half Dome in Yosemite National Park about 85 to 90 miles away. It's not every day that you get to see that, but uh, it's clear enough today where that is happening. And I can see through my uh, telephoto lens on my camera that there's a lot of snow up there too. The official investigation faulted both pilots for failing to check the airspace around them. Hutchins' body was taken back to Washington where his funeral was held at the Trinity Lutheran Church in Parkland. Mourners filed past his coffin draped in the American flag and then gathered at the Parkland Lutheran Cemetery where he was lowered into the ground. Constance Hutchins, who had been making plans to attend her son's graduation from flight school that week, was now burying her son. When she passed away in 1969, she was buried next to her son. In preparing this video, I learned that there's little documentation available about Bobby Hutchins and no books about him. Rumors have it that Hal Roach cut him from our gang because his dad was abusing the boy, starving him to stunt his growth, and not allowing him to play with others on the set. But with most people from that era dead, there's no way to confirm such stories. James Arthur Hutchins died in 1961 and was buried in a different town. Well, I want to thank you for watching this episode of History Hunters. We go to weird places like this and tell you stories that maybe nobody else has told you about. We always love to have new subscribers. We'd love to have a comment or two. Possibly tell your friends about us and give us a like. Catch you on the next episode of History Hunters. There goes the plane. <laughs>